This physcast will look at an atomic physics problem using a quantum mechanical model of the atom. In the interpretation step, we can see in our question we have an atom that is moving to a lower energy level. Moving to a lower energy level means that the excess energy must be going somewhere and that excess energy is being carried by an emitted photon. In a developed stage, we'll need to think about what the energy levels in a hydrogen atom look like. We have a fairly straightforward expression for what the energy in the hydrogen atom looks like. It depends upon the principal quantum number n, and it scales like 1 over the square of that number. And we can have that multiplied by the lowest energy state, where our lowest energy state, the ground state here with n equals 1, can be written as minus 13.6 in units of electron volts. That means that if we were to draw a diagram of the energy levels for our hydrogen atom, our lowest level here, the ground state here, um, would correspond to n equals 1, and then the next highest level would be n equals 2, and then the level above that would be n equals 3, and then above that n equals 4, and we would label these perhaps E1, E2, E3, and E4, where because this scales like 1 over that principal quantum number squared, we can see they're getting closer and closer together. The transition that we're interested in is going from the n equals 4 state down to the n equals 3 state, and as that occurs, the atom has less energy and that extra energy is carried off by a photon. So what do we know about the energy of a photon? We know that for a photon, the energy relates directly to the frequency, given by Planck's constant h multiplied by the frequency. We also know that the photon, being the particle of light, has a relationship between the frequency and the wavelength, and the wavelength is what the question is asking for, uh, given by the speed, c, is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength which means we can rewrite the photon energy now in terms of wavelength as Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Moving on to our evaluation stage, we can see that we want the energy of the photon to match the change in the energy of the atom. And given that we know the energy of the photon can be written as hc over lambda, and we want that to equal the change in energy of the atom we should be able to rearrange that to say that the wavelength that we're looking for is simply hc divided by the change in the energy of the atom. Now, what is the change in the energy of the atom? So that will be E4 minus E3, which will simply be 1 over 4 squared times the ground state minus 1 over 3 squared times the ground state. And I can write that simply as the ground state multiplied by 1 16th minus 1 9th. And I can write that ground state as I've indicated already as minus 13.6 electron volts. And this uh, difference here I can approximate uh, in a decimal form as minus 0 0.0486, left with a change in the energy of the atom of 0 0.661 in units of electron volts. So I've presented in terms of the ground state energy. So coming back to my wavelength, I can write this now as Planck's constant, which in SI units I can write as 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34, uh, and the speed of light, which I can write as 3.00 times 10 to the power of 8, divided by, now I'm ideally going to put this in SI units, so I've got my 0 0.661 electron volts, Remember, an electron volt is the energy of a charge with the electron charge going through a potential difference of 1 volt. So if I multiply that by the electron charge, 1.60 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, my bottom line there will now be converted from electron volts into joules. And I do that calculation, and I come up with the number of 1.88 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Or I can write that as 1.88 micrometers. 
and there's the wavelength of the photon emitted by this atom. Moving up to allow for a quick assessment step just to see if this answer makes sense. One nice thing I should check here is to make sure that I do in fact have an answer in meters. So let's just quickly check the units in my final calculation here. Let's say I had units of Planck's constant and I wrote that in terms of joule seconds. That's the SI unit for 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34 for Planck's constant. Multiplied by the speed of light, that will be in meters per second. And divided by, now I made sure I converted my change in energy here from electron volts into joules. So that should just be in joules. And we can see that this joule cancels with this, this second cancels with this per second. And indeed I am left in units of meters. So I think my calculation should be correct.